Where's the crash site now? Over there. We're getting closer. Hello there, Sir from Seventeen once again, introducing you to Chapter 12 in my enslaved hard difficulty video walkthrough. And this level is entitled The Dam, and hooray for the old intro! <laughs> It's probably a bunch of new people wondering what the hell just happened and this is just an old guide I was doing before I changed my intro and you know Deus Ex came out and, and changed everything. So we're once again back in the you know the toil of Monkey and Trip in their adventure to 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 deal with the, the troubles that they're being faced with in their in their timeline, which is the machinations of of evil and what have you, so in this area we're gonna be trying to steal a a submarine, but before we can do that, it, uh, it gets a little hairy. So, and once you enter this room, you're going to be with with Trip and is it Pigsy? I think his name is. Yeah, that's Pigsy. And you're just going to be doing a bit of mile platforming in in a bunch of really really big big areas. And there's a couple of combat sections which aren't too bad, but a couple of them can be challenging. And this is the submarine that we're going to be trying to steal. So. This room is interesting because I got stuck here quite a lot when I first played the game. And uh, as per usual, I'm going to be running around and picking up all the orbs that I can because, as you know, it helps you upgrade your stuff and it just makes for a smoother playthrough. So the basic philosophy of this room is Pigs is going to uh, lead the way, kind of. He's not the, the best navigator of this area. He will wait for you, though. He is quite swift. And he's going to run over here and climb down to this door. And uh, you need him to get to where you need to be, because he's going to do his little grappling hook arm thing. There we go. And he'll get you down. And then from here on out, it's it's pretty much just you and him trying to solve this next puzzle. And what this next puzzle entails is... Um... Let's have a look. It's been a while, actually. <laughs> I'm okay talking about this like I know exactly what I'm doing when I haven't played in Slayer for a couple of months. So this is... Is this a submarine room? If this is the submarine room, this is a pain in the ass, and I do believe that it is. Because um, what happens is you have to manipulate two consoles that are going to move two submarines, and you have to turn them both around and move them so that they all move out of the way and they don't block the, the submarine's path. It's, uh, it's a pain in the ass, but once you know what you're doing, it's very simple, and the videos will show you exactly how that is done. And uh, I should have probably trimmed stuff like this out, these, these little cutscene moments, but... They're not detracting too much away from what is necessary, so yeah, this is the bit. So you climb up this, you jump pipe to pipe, like uh, Tarzan or, you know, Mowgli, depending on which jungle reference you want to use here. And if you come up here, there's going to be a little console. And uh, when you press it, the, do you see the, the glowing red lights there? That is a platform. The other one is glowing green. And what it means is these are two moving platforms that are going to get you and help you navigate the room. But what they're also going to do is they're going to block the path of this submarine. So you're going to see in a moment. There you go. Blocks the path of the submarine. And uh, it's not going to work. So you need to manipulate both of these platforms so that when you push the button and you mo well, when you tell it to move, they don't block that middle, uh, that middle stage area so that the submarine can come straight through and you'll have no problems. And the way to do this is exactly as you're going to see me do it. But um, I'm not going to talk too much about it because the Deus Ex Guide and the Resistance 3 Guides were all about me talking about exactly what the guide was going to be because A, it was hard for, for some parts and B, they needed to be a lot more in-depth than this necessarily needs to be. Because um, you'll notice I pushed the, the lever there, I moved this across and what this is going to do is it's going to crash into that one, then I could jump across and then if you have it navigate once again back to where it came from, you can then jump off this and then tw twist this one around so that when you use it again, they will both move out of the way of the submarine. And it's kind of obvious and kind of simple, but when I first got here, I just didn't know what it was expecting me to do because I didn't realize a, a few of the different facets of the design. And I wasn't actually going to do any commentaries today, but the, the project that I've got to do over the break before I go back to university, the, <laughs> which is basically to write a 15 to 30 page screenplay for when I get back, which I get back uh, in about a week and... Uh, it's, it's about a week away, about a week and a little bit. And um, I didn't even have an idea for it, but the other day I started messing about with a few things and uh, I ended up writing 10 pages, which is quite good. So instead of having to focus on that and you know, try and get the, the creative juices flowing. I know now that I have this this idea that's blossomed and turned into something completely different, I know when I sit down and continue to write it, which I'll probably do later on, the, the words will come, the pages will flow, and I'll end up doing it very, very easily. So I can 
get back to, to my hobby and getting this done for, for you guys that are playing the game and need the help. But what I'm going to talk about instead of the, the, the monotony that is this puzzle, because this is easily the worst part of the game for me because I fucking hated it, is I got an award today on YouTube and it's the first time I've got it. And I don't know if it is an award, I don't know what you call it, but it's those little badges, those little ribbons that you get that tell you that you did something good in the YouTube community. And I know some are more spectacular than others and I'm not even too sure what mine means if I'm completely honest or how I've got it, but I'm happy and it's addictive and uh, what, what I got was the, the thir number 33 most viewed directors today and I don't know if that's out of the entirety of YouTube or, or whatever or how that's categorized but it made me feel really good and I was giddy as balls when I woke up and saw it I was like oh yeah I got a ribbon I'm not quite sure what it means but it's fucking awesome and I, I was doing a little you know I was doing the happy dance <laughs> I was full on jiving around and I don't know how I really got it I don't know who's been bombing my videos and watching the shit out of them to get me in that position, but please keep doing it. Let's try and get as many of these motherfuckers as we can, because they're addictive. They're kind of like digital heroin, and uh, I'm sat here with a belt around my bicep just waiting for more good goodness. It's like, oh, it's such a good feeling. And, um, yeah, just, just, just thank you for everybody that's been hitting my channel recently. I've been getting a lot of activity, and this award is, is representative of that, so I'm super stoked, but... I know you go onto these other channels and have got fucking 9 billion subscribers and they've all got number one viewed globally, number one viewed this, this, that and other. And it's like, yeah, you fucking show offs, but this is my first one, so I'm, I'm super stoked and I hope to, to, to keep building on that and maybe make a name for it, which would be extremely good. Another thing I want to talk about, because once you've moved the platforms, you've got to do a little bit more mild platforming to get back to where you were to get onwards from where you were. So it's it's up and down. It's, it's you know it swings and roundabouts as an expression that they say around my end. But Gears of War 3, the review embargo was up as of today, as of the 15th of September. So the reviews are now able to print, and you're going to be seeing a hell of a lot more Gears 3 footage than probably you care to see before you play it. So I've been going around reading the reviews, watching the reviews. I even watched the quick look on Giant Bomb, and I, I learned a couple of things I didn't. So the first thing that, that really stood out to me, which I didn't have any inclination towards that Epic was doing, was there's now an arcade mode in, in Gears of War. And the, the cool thing about every feature of this game, be it the beast mode, be it the horde mode, be it the campaign, is all the kills, all the stats, all the ribbons, all the challenges, all that kind of good stuff that they've put in to give it you know, all that meatiness that's going to make people come back and give it some longevity. All that kind of stuff counts in every game mode so even if you're playing the campaign you're going to be getting kills towards your achievements and all that kind of stuff regardless of what mode you're in be it against bots be it against people be it in private matches you're going to be getting you know acknowledgement for what you're doing and it's going to carry across all game modes so that already to me is is, is fucking beast i'm super happy uh, i don't know what that achievement is right then the only reason i got it is because i'm playing on a different account which didn't have any achievements so that i could get the the hard difficulty to pop again because i'd already done it on my own and um, this section here, actually, I'm just going to have to pause the, <laughs> the the little diatribe about Gears 3. It's kind of challenging because there's a bunch of enemies and uh, Pigs is going to fall from the submarine and he's going to be, he's going to nearly go into the fans and die. So you have to destroy the fans, you have to destroy the enemies, and it's this kind of juggling match of making sure the submarine can continue on its route and making sure you don't get your ass handed to you by robots. So just utilise your rod. Because you can fire the plasma, which kills stuff very quickly. You can fire the stun charge, which is going to be your best friend. And uh, just make sure you keep prioritizing the things in the way of the submarine so Pigsy doesn't die. Because if he hits them, it is game over. You will be hitting the last checkpoint. And there's nothing worse than, you know, getting your shit pushed in. So, back to Gears, anyhow. Uh, all that stuff carries through all the playthroughs, which is a fantastic prospect. Because I love me some Gears campaign and some Gears hard and all that good stuff. But now, they've taken a major leaf out of the, the Halo... Uh, handbook and the arcade mode is, is pretty much the equivalent of turning scoring mode on from Halo so on as on Halo where you got the the little buttons in the bottom corner popping up the medals for getting headshots and stuff and the little score and the aggregate to compete on gears you're, you're earning the the score just very similar you're earning all the medals and the ribbons you also have a little kill feed in the bottom corner just like you would in the multiplayer showing you what kills you're getting and who's getting the kills and it it just looks awesome because, I mean, 
people that know me or have listened to my stuff, they know I'm not the biggest Halo fan, so even though I do respect what Halo has done, and I do think that their scoring system and all those cool things that they put into the, the single player were fantastic for adding longevity and for just adding, you know, general interest once you'd beaten the game, to me, having that in a Gears game is infinitely better because I'm in love with Gears. I bought a 360 because of Gears. If it wasn't for the original... I wouldn't be making guides because I wouldn't own a 360 to record off of and it's, it's as simple as that and it's just a, an awesome thing and what they've also gone and borrowed is is the, the skull feature of having things that you can unlock uh, and, and turn on which give added challenge and, and do silly little easter egg type things and they're calling them mutations and I do believe that mutations is, a, is slang for something from the Unreal Tournament game so I'm not too sure how much is ripped off of Halo, or if Halo kind of took the idea from Unreal, but uh, they're bringing it through anyhow, and uh, the little twist in this is you have to unlock the, the equivalent of the skulls, these mutations, or mutators, or whatever they're called, uh, by doing very specific things, and some of them aren't easy, so you have to do stuff just to get the stuff that's going to make things different, which is a, an awesome prospect, and some of them sound really, really cool, and it, it could even give birth to a different recording or a different guide because if I can do an, an insane run with a bunch of really really difficult skulls in, in brackets put on to make it even more challenging and even more interesting to watch then that's definitely something I might be looking into doing but apparently it takes a long time to unlock them so that might be a, an extra guide or like a just a playthrough not so much a guide like a challenge run that I'll record and I'll, I'll put up type of thing but um, it, it all depends on the game. I mean, if, if Gears 3 comes out and it sucks massive dick and I don't like it, which is highly unlikely, I'll probably not be doing too much. But as it stands, I am in love with Gears. I'm a big Gears head. I'll be doing multiplayer. I'll be doing Horde. I'll be doing Beast. I'll be doing Campaign. I'll be doing four-player Campaign. I will be doing... I'll, I'll be literally making love to the disc. And I know the logistics on that are kind of crude, but it'll be happening, let me tell you. So, we're, we're coming towards the end of this, this level. Once you've moved down here, you have effectively escorted the, the submarine to the bottom of the base. All there is to do is these last few rooms, and these last rooms can be quite challenging, because there's a lot of enemies, and for whatever reason, I just get a little bit careless in them. So that guy there has the icon above his head, which tells me if I beat him up, he will give me a lovely button prompt that's going to screw his friends over. And there's nothing better than using one enemy to kill his buddies. It's just, you know, the nature of the beast. It's how Enslaved works. And these guys have all got the, the force fields on, which means you either have to hit them with the charge attack or the stun shot from your, your rod. And you'll notice I'm not wasting any time. I'm hitting them with the rod and finishing them off with the plasma because uh, I could have died in the recording, so I wanted to do this as quick as possible. Uh, one thing to mention as well, the life bar is 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 very real. It will go down if the robots shoot at the submarine. And uh, don't get me wrong, the robots will shoot at the submarine, but if you're quick enough and you're on the ball, they should not have enough time to destroy it. Uh, this guy can be a pain in the ass just because he takes a beating. The real threat here is the red guys, the red uh, bulky dudes, because they will run at you, they will do a jump attack, and then they will go straight into their combo where they do a lot of damage, and you can't seem to get out of it sometimes. I mean, look at me, I'm trying to block it. I managed to get the block on right at the end, and I think, balls to this, I hit him with the special attack, and uh, he's doing it there. Whenever he flashes like he just did then, that is a signpost to say he's about to do the combo, so watch out for it, evade it, and counter. Or don't counter like you would if you bought counter, because that's a piece of shit. Uh, wait for him to finish and then attack him, that's what I meant to say. But uh, there's a couple more robots shooting at pigs issue, you want to clean them up. And uh, just be careful because there's going to be another one of the dudes. And as you just saw, he does a lovely catapult straight into you. Does a lovely little front flip, drop kick move. And he takes a beating and he can counter you just like you can counter him. Uh, luckily enough, I've got my focused attack. So if anybody wants to you know, try and be a silly bastard, I can just finish them off with this like I just did. And then you get over to this part of the platform. There's some more plasma. So if anything else spawns, you can just shoot it with your gun. And the job's a good one, but that is effectively, I think, the end of the level, guys. So I do apologize that this video has been a long time coming, but Resistance 3 and Deus Ex were definitely higher priorities. Yeah, I think there's only about four videos, which I'm going to finish today, so I will be getting this guide up as quickly as I can and ticking it off my guides list. And then it'll just be the Red Faction Armageddon in time for Gears of War 3. So thanks for watching, guys, and you take care now.